what is going on everybody welcome back to the mid-level media channel your hub for everything physical media and entertainment i am ken today guys i wanted to talk about vinegar syndrome and specifically i wanted to talk about the six vinegar syndrome titles that i have gotten in 2024 and rank them so i have collected uh, six titles that were released by Vinegar Syndrome in 2024. I have watched them all and I'm going to rank them and talk about them in today's video. So I, I got re requests for a lot of these to review. So I figured instead of doing standalone reviews for all of them or the five that I haven't reviewed, I actually have reviewed one of these. Um, actually two if you count the Little, Little Darlings review I did in my Physical Media Lives episode. But um, I thought I could just get it all out of the way in this one video and give you my thoughts on each one um, of these releases and then just kind of talk about Vinegar Syndrome in 2024 because I have some thoughts that I want to get out there and they may or may not rub some people the wrong way. Um, but I will talk about it in today's video, but before I do that, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. We talk about physical media on this channel, guys, Blu-rays, 4Ks, owning the movies that you love, all that stuff, they're behind me every single day. If you like that kind of stuff, hit the subscribe button, and then uh, like this video and comment down below, guys, what have you been collecting from Vinegar Syndrome in 2024? What titles have you purchased? Are you a subscriber? What are you thinking? What are you feeling? about Vinegar Syndrome in 2024, let me know that in the comment section below. I always like to gauge the opinion um, of the people that's watching, my subscribers, my my followers, whatever you want to say, my audience, I guess is what I should say. I don't like saying followers. That, that's, that gets a little weird. Um, because you all have some very interesting opinions and perspectives, and I love hearing it all. I love hearing it all, even if it differs with my own. But all right, guys, let's let's get into it. So first off, I do want to say that all six of these that I purchased, I don't regret getting. I enjoyed them all, and I think that they're all good releases that I can, of good conscience, recommend um, to you. But I had to rank them in a specific order. But going into just my thoughts on Vinegar Syndrome in 2024, I am digging the hell out of what Vinegar Syndrome is doing right now. To me... They're having, they're doing some of the best stuff that they've ever done uh, since they've started. I, I know that, here's the thing, I, I get very frustrated when I'm talking, especially to like the Vinegar Syndrome heads, the Vinegar Syndrome audience, because I'm trying to convey my thoughts and what I want Vinegar Syndrome to be. And ultimately, guys, it's it's up to Vinegar Syndrome how they want it. They've been extremely successful. They don't need my input or thoughts. But I, I try to get out there like, what, word, what direction would I like Vinegar Syndrome to go in? And everybody almost always takes that the wrong way. I don't want Vinegar Syndrome to be strictly like mainstream titles. I'm not looking for them to be the next Scream Factory. I'm not looking for them to do Nightmare on Elm Street on 4K. What I want them to do is take their power, um, which is incredible packaging, incredible transfers. Like they just do some of the best work. Take that power and that influence and use it for good movies. Um, and again, that's always subjective. And you may think I'm sounding pretentious by saying good movies. But I feel like for the first time in, I mean, they've had good movies before, guys. They've had good movies. But I feel like they're on a hot streak right now of just good films, good cinema that's good for the movie love and soul. And I am digging it. Now, they still got their, uh, their, their trashy, sleazy stuff. They still got all that stuff as well. But it feels like they're doing more films. And I think that they're focusing on that primarily with their new uh, cine cinematograph line. Is that the right way to say it? Uh, I said cinematography, cinematography, cinematograph, however way you want to say it. I'll, I'll mispronounce it again in today's video. But they're really focusing on actual movies, like films, like uh, not lost films, but just underseen gems that haven't really been given the treatment that they deserve in physical media since they've come out from the 70s, from the 80s, from the 90s. We'll cover a couple of those in today's video. We got more that's coming out. As I'm recording this right now, I haven't heard uh, the halfway to Black Friday sale stuff that they're going to be coming out with, their announcements, uh, which are tonight. I'm recording this on Thursday, probably dropping this on Sunday. So we'll know by the time I drop this video. I just don't know it recording right now. Uh, so I'm very excited for their fourth in the cinematograph line. 
Um, but beyond that, they've just done some really cool gothic horror films. We got more on the horizon. Um, you know, Southern Comfort, uh, Red Rock. They're just doing movies. They just did a Western, which I got on the screen back there. Five card stud. They're doing movies. And I'm not trying to be pretentious when I say that, guys, but they're doing like films, not just like schlocky, trash, sleazy, slasher, cult stuff uh, from the 70s, 80s, which has its place. And I enjoy a lot of that stuff, too. But I can't just watch that stuff. I like that they're diving into different uh, genres and different areas of film. I just think that's super cool. And they've just been doing some of their best work yet. I'm not, Again, I never said that I wanted them to do only mainstream horror movies. I feel like that's the perception sometimes with people that love Vinegar Syndrome, the people that complain about the titles that they're putting out. They're like, oh, what do you want? Just the mainstream stuff? Blah, 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 blah. No, I just want good movies. I don't care if I've seen it before. I want good, solid films. And I feel like we're getting that now. Of course, mixed in with the trash. I like the trash too, guys. Don't get me wrong. I like the trash. I just can't only buy trash. And Vinegar Syndrome just does such great work with packaging. Like, I want to collect these movies uh, with this in incredible packaging. And I want the movies inside that incredible packaging to also deliver and be good. So that's my thoughts on Vinegar Syndrome right now, 2024. I think they're having a great start uh, to the year. And I'm excited for the March stuff. I ordered three titles from the March. Actually, four titles from the March slate if you count the partner label stuff. And I'm looking forward to ordering more because we got a new VSU and a new cinematograph line. And they're just killing it right now, in my opinion. I think they're doing great. So I hope they keep up this direction that they're going in because um, I think it's awesome. And it doesn't always have to be about schlocky cult horror films. You know, we got enough of that in physical media. We need other types of movies. I like other types of movies. And I hope uh, that you do as well. All right, let's get into the ranking, guys. Um, I'm off my soapbox. Um, number six, and I, I put this in number six, not because I think it's a bad release. It's actually a great release, but it was probably my least favorite movie, um, of the bunch. And I, I'm ranking this not just on movie, but also presentation, you know, quality, special features, all that stuff. But, um, the movie definitely plays a part in it, but phase four, um, phase four is is a good movie. It's a good movie. It's, I don't know if you would call this a creature feature. It's definitely a little sci-fi. It's about some kind of like transmission that comes down from space and makes the ants like hyperactive. And then they're, they're starting to attack people and stuff. And, um, it's a good movie. I enjoyed the film. I thought it started off like really strong and then it just kind of got a little dull for a little bit. And they're just kind of hanging out in the scientific research facility. It feels very small scale. Um, and I thought it was going to go just a little bit bigger given the premise, like you could have done so much with these ants and like attacking cities and stuff like that, but they don't go for that at all. Um, it's just very small scale, just kind of contained and confined to this one research location. But there are some cool sequences for sure and some good horror moments for sure. But I enjoyed the movie overall. It's just, I would say of all the movies that I watched, this was probably my least favorite. But this is a really good addition, guys. It's in a nice slip box and uh, just really cool. I've showed all this stuff off before, guys, but I'll show it off a little bit more. That artwork is just insane, but this was directed by Saul Bass. I think it was his first and only film that he ever directed, and he was a very, very famous, like, graphic poster artist from back in the day. I think he's definitely famous for doing, like, posters like Vertigo and, and some other films that I can't think of off the top of my head, but Anatomy of a Murder, I think. Um, but there are some great special features in this as well. There's like a 38 minute making of documentary on this movie. Just some great stuff included in this set. I mean, I just think it's super cool that Vinegar Syndrome, again, this is kind of a horror film, but it's also a science fiction film. It's a creature feature. It's a lot of different things. It's not just a, a, a cult schlocky horror film. It is an actual film and I do think it has some cinematic value. And it looked fantastic on 4K. Like nobody can ever take away uh, the work that Vinegar Syndrome does with the restorations. This looked excellent on 4K. And I, I don't know what it looked like before. I don't even think it's it had a Blu-ray though. I think it's this is the first time it's been upgraded uh, since DVD. There's a nice little booklet in here. And I like the artwork, guys. I like the case artwork. I like the ants. I think they're pretty cool. Um, but Phase 4, that's 
my number six. I like this one a lot. It was just my least. Something has to be the in last place, guys. I'm sorry. Uh, and coming in at number five is another one that I really liked. Um, but uh, the the horrible Doctor Hitchcock. Um, this was a really cool gothic horror film. And uh, I'm trying to see, like, I can't remember, like, the actors involved in this movie. Uh, but you've got, uh, let's see, directed by Robert Hampton, uh, Montgomery Glenn, Teresa, Fitz- Teresa Fitzgerald, Harriet White. So really good cast. And I thought everybody was excellent in this film. But the story itself is very dark. It's about this uh, scientist that, you know, h- h- has a wife. And he is basically, he basically created some kind of a serum because he has a weird sex kink. Like he, he likes having sex with women that feel like they're dead. So he's kind of into necrophilia, but he doesn't really want to have sex with somebody that's dead. So he creates a serum to make his wife like pass out and become comatose in like a dead like state. And then he has sex with her. Well, he makes the serum just a little bit too strong and accidentally kills his wife. And this kind of, you know, distraughts him to the point where he leaves his house. He leaves his maid in charge. He goes off for like 12 years, gets remarried, brings his new wife back to the same house with the maid 12 years later. And some haunting stuff starts to happen. She starts to see his wife kind of walking around in the house still. So it's that kind of a ghost story type situation. Um, I I definitely thought it was a good movie. Definitely a, a good movie. Um, I thought they, there are some really good sequences in this film for sure, but I thought they could have went in a little bit more, they could have ramped it up just a little bit more. There were parts that were very dull and I thought they had the opportunity to do just a little bit more with this premise, but they it never really felt like they, they put on the gas fully, uh, with this story, if that makes any sense, but it's a beautiful looking film, cinematic value everywhere in this movie. It looks so great in 4K. There's some incredible sequences of color in this house. The house itself, that gothic setting, just looks fantastic in 4K. So all kinds of greatness in this uh, in this release, in this movie. And I would highly recommend it if you like these kind of gothic horror movies. You know, I'm not super into the gothic horror films, so maybe they're all kind of a little slower paced. Um, but I definitely want to get more into the genre and they're getting ready to release another one of these type of films in 4k very soon. You got Dr. Terror's house of horrors. So I'm very much looking forward to that one. And I think that one has like uh, Christopher Lee and it's got Donald Sutherland and it. it's got a great cast. So I'm excited for that one for sure. But this is such a great addition. This also had some really good features as well. And it's just a beautiful, beautiful looking 4k across the board. This was definitely like just an out of nowhere, like very creepy image, like in the movie. Uh, so I enjoy this one a lot. The incredible, the horrible, sorry guys, Dr. Hitchcock. It kind of looks like it says Dr. Uh, Hickok, but it's supposedly pronounced Dr. Hitchcock. So but yeah, very cool box set. A lot of side loaders coming out uh, from uh, vinegar syndrome lately. So yeah, that, that was my number five. Getting into my number four is a movie I just watched yesterday morning, was really looking forward to this one, and that is Five Card Stud. So I am a pretty big Western fan. I'm getting more and more into the genre every single movie I watch. I love these types of movies. I just reviewed The Shootist on Blu-ray from Arrow Video, so go check out that video if you haven't already. But this was really freaking cool. Like, I really enjoyed this one a lot. Like I said, guys, it's number four, but that's just because my top three were all so such great films. I enjoyed this one a lot. I wouldn't say it's a great film, but it's a solid 3.5 to 4 out of a 5 movie. I really... Really enjoyed it. You got Dean Martin in this movie. You got Robert Mitchum um, in this film. Like the cast in this movie is absolutely insane. Somebody else was in this film uh, that I cannot think of. Uh, that Roddy McDowell is in this movie from Fright Night. So he is also in this film. And his character is really, um, he's kind of a bad dude. But I just love his uh, his swagger and his confidence in the film. I thought he was really good. But you got Rob. This is pretty much, guys. If you've seen Night of the Hunter with Robert Mitchum, this almost plays like a spiritual successor to that film. And I'm not going to say anything to spoil that um, exactly what that is, but it feels in the same universe. Um, but Robert Mitchum is fantastic. Dean Martin, who I haven't seen enough of that cl- classic actor, is fantastic. This is kind of a western. 
uh, fused with a mystery whodunit story. You got these six or seven card players at a table at the beginning. They're playing five card stud. One of the guys is cheating them out of their money. So they take him and hang him um, without any kind of trial or any kind of, you know, a due process or anything. They hang him, they kill him. And then all of a sudden, those six uh, guys that were left that hanged him are start to die off one by one. So somebody is coming to get their revenge for the guy that they hung in the beginning of the film. So you have to try to figure out who it is the entire movie. And uh, it's just a really good film, really good movie. The, there's two actresses in this movie that are really good, particularly the actress that runs the beauty salon. I thought she was incredible, just extremely charismatic and very beautiful. Um, so five card set and the presentation, this is a Blu-ray release, guys, but it looked really freaking good. Not 4K quality. You can definitely tell it didn't have that HDR, but it was just crystal clear and just looked fantastic. So... I'm not 100%, but this, uh, oh yes, it was restored in fourth. So this is a 4K scan, but yeah, this looked really good. So highly recommend five card stuff. There's a couple of features in here as well. There's like a 20 minute feature on the uh, director here who I didn't even mention, but Henry Hathaway, um, who directed a ton of, of, of really classic films. Um, and I can't think of one off the top of my head. I think he did the Sons of Katie Elder with John Wayne. So he's done a lot of of Western films. Um, but, uh, oh, he did True Grit. That was the big one with John Wayne a, a few years, uh, either before this, I think before this movie. But this is a really, really cool Western. If you haven't seen it, I do highly, highly recommend it. But yeah, two features on that and then an audio commentary. All right, so let's get into my number three, and that is Red Rock West. So uh, this is directed by John Dahl. I love this movie so much that I went and watched his other two uh, noir films, uh, which they kind of call the John Dahl Noir Trilogy. I watched his other two noir films from the late 80s and then the mid 90s, The Last Seduction, which is in 1995. And then Kiss Me, uh, Kiss Me, Kill Me Again, sorry guys, uh, from 1988 with Val Kilmer. And really enjoyed both of those films. I, I hope that we get at least Kill Me Again. Maybe they put that in the cinematograph line. Um, and then they can do The Last Seduction as well. And it would be cool to have all three of the John Dahl films, film noirs, uh, in, in a nice little cinematograph line from Vinegar Syndrome. That would be awesome. So um, I did a review on this one, so I don't feel like I, I need to talk about this too much. Go check out my full review. I compared it to the Umbrella Edition, but really, really enjoyed this film a lot. This is it has Nicolas Cage in it. Um, you got uh, Laura, Laura, Finn, Laura Flynn Boyle from Twin Peaks is in this movie as well. Um, Dennis Hopper is playing the villain, uh, which he tends to do in a lot of movies from the 80s and the uh, early to mid 90s. Um, he just does it so well, guys. He just does it so incredibly well. But a really cool movie, really cool, like modern day noir Western film. And I enjoyed this one quite a bit. So Red Rock West from Vinegar Syndrome was a really good release and it has some really good features in it as well that are different from the Umbrella release. But again, I cover that in my video. Um, this one I really haven't got a chance to talk about on the channel at all since I unboxed it. Uh, but coming in at number two is Walter Hill's Southern Comfort. So this is a VSU edition, uh, which differs from the other special packaging editions from Vinegar Syndrome because it has a nice little magnetic um, opening right here. You open this up and you got a slip cover on the inside. You got a booklet on the inside. And it's just, these are really cool additions. I've made it my mission to collect every single one. This is number eight. They're getting ready to announce number nine. And um, unless the movies just really start sucking like consistently, like I, I'm going to continue to collect uh, for this line. But so far, like they do really good movies in this line that I tend to enjoy. And Southern Comfort is definitely one of those. I thought this was fantastic. And I, I'm trying to remember everything, guys, because this was about a month and a half ago that I watched this one. But directed by Walter Hill, I the more I see of this director, the more I love. I need to watch his entire filmography. Um, of course, the same director as The Warriors, 48 Hours. Um, tons of movies, guys, that this guy has directed. Red Heat with Arnold Schwarzenegger. I know I'm missing a ton. Crossroads with the kid with a with the kid from the Karate Kid. He did so many incredible films. And Southern Comfort was one of those. But this is a really cool one, guys, about, say, I think it was like the National Guard. They were like on some kind of like training mission in the swamp. They were just kind of training for the weekend. 
Um, and uh, they steal another group's canoes, and then they get one of them gets sniped and uh, and and dies. And then they're basically hunted the rest of the movie by this unknown group. So it's kind of like a slasher film. And this is set in Louisiana, so you have this nice swamp setting, which looks great in 4K. So this is kind of like a slasher film where people are just getting picked off one by one the entire movie. And you're never sure who it is until the very end because they don't show the people that are that are killing them from a distance. And they're getting caught in traps and all kinds of stuff. So it kind of gives you a little bit of Rambo vibes also. But this is a really good movie. This is from, I believe, 1981. And I had never heard of this film before uh, this VSU was announced. I know I had a Scream or Shout Factory edition from a number of years ago. But really good movie directed by Walter Hill. And I'll just say this. I don't want to spoil too much. But by the time you get to like the last 20 to 30 minutes of this movie gives off some really extreme Wicker Man vibes. I'll just say that. And I was kind of caught off guard by that, but pleasantly surprised because I love the Wicker Man. Uh, but it kind of turns into the Wicker Man uh, for the last like 15 to 20 minutes. And there's some controversial stuff in that in that scene as well that some people don't even like watching this movie because of. Um, but I'm not going to get into all that, guys. This was a great addition. This looked phenomenal. I would say... I don't know. I got my number one and my number one for a reason, but I would say this was one of the strongest uh, 4K restorations that I've seen Vinegar Syndrome do. I thought this looked freaking fantastic. Um, now, there were some scenes that didn't look great, but you can just tell, you can tell guys when they're just scenes that they couldn't get fully restored. That's just the way they are. That's just the way it was shot and they couldn't get it restored. Uh, like they would have wanted to, but everything else just looks amazing. But just an incredible film with an incredible cast. You got Fred Ward in this movie, you got Keith Carradine in this movie, you got Powers Booth. It's an amazing film, absolutely amazing film. Looks great on 4K. The features are amazing. Walter Hill uh, gives another, I think, 15, 20 minute interview talking about this movie. He's really doing a good job. Um, you can just tell he cares about his films and preserving his films because he comes back and gives interviews for, I, I think, pretty much all of his movies that are restored in 4K, it feels like. He did one for The Warriors recently that came out from Arrow Video. And I really respect Walter Hill. He's He just really seems like a filmmaker's filmmaker. I, I love the hell out of him. So Southern Comfort was definitely a banger. Coming in at my number two. And coming in at number one, guys, is from the Cinna Matograph line. And that is Little Darlings on 4K. So this is the, I think the one coming up going south is a 4K, but this is the only 4K from that line so far because Red Rock West was a Blu-ray. Looked really good on Blu-ray. To be honest, I thought that looked better than the Umbrella Blu-ray. Um, just trying to leave that note in here real quick. But anyway, Little Darlings, what a great movie. That's what I'm talking, that's the theme of this video, guys, in Vinegar Syndrome. Usually when we're talking about Vinegar Syndrome, we're like, Hey, it was all right for what it was. You know, there was some good kills. You know, it was a pretty decent slasher. That's usually what you hear when people are talking about Vinegar Syndrome titles. But we're talking about films with Vinegar Syndrome, and that's what I'm loving so much with what Vinegar Syndrome is doing now. But Little Darlings was just a fantastic movie about two girls that go to a summer camp, and they get teased into this pact or bet to see who can lose their virginity first of these two girls uh, that admit that they are virgins when they get to uh, the summer camp. So just a really good movie. There's some stuff that, uh, I, I mean, I talked about this in my Physical Media Lives episode, but there's stuff in this movie, you know, because the girls are underage. They're like 15, 16, maybe 17 years old. I can't quite remember the age. Um, and, and they're both going at, well, one of them in particular is going after an older man. And the other one is going after Matt Dillon, who I think is probably around the same age as she is. But the one girl is going after a camp counselor, which is clearly a guy that's twice her age, Amon, Armand Asante. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it's something that's done tastefully. It's tackled and handled tastefully. Um, but it's something that people would not put in a movie nowadays. At least I don't believe they would not in this way and not framed in this way, because this is kind of a coming of age comedy movie. But I just thought that this was cool that this movie was uh, made in 1980 um, and it tackles girls losing their virginity, trying to lose their virginity. And that's usually subject matter that you'll see in other teen sex comedies about boys trying to lose their virginity all throughout the eighties, you know, Porky's Revenge of the Nerds, all those kind of movies going all the way up to American Pie. 
Um, and it started kind of with Little Darling. So this movie really kind of inspired that entire genre of film about boys trying to lose their virginity. And it started with two girls trying to lose their virginity. So I think this movie is kind of groundbreaking um, in that respect. But this movie set at a summer camp, guys, and I've said it over and over again, like 4Ks uh, with that HDR and, and, and summer camp movies like just go together like peanut butter and jelly. Like summer camp movies just look so freaking fantastic um, in 4K. So every time they put out a movie that's set at summer camp and it's in 4K, um, I'm there. I'm there all day long. That's why I cannot wait till they finally do the sleepaway camp movies in 4K because the burning looked great. I'm a big fan of the Friday the 13th 4K. I know there's some people that's not. I don't get it. I thought it was a great 4K. So anytime you do a summer camp movie in 4K, guys, I am there. Absolutely. This looked so good. I would say of all the movies that I'm talking about, that's why this is number one. Um, this one looked the best as far as its 4K presentation. I thought it was absolutely immaculate and such a great movie. There is so many great special features in this as well. And look at these sets, guys. They, you know, just freaking awesome. Pink discs. And you got nice little booklets inside. Same with Red Rock West. The cinematograph line is just such a cool line. I'm really, really digging it. And I am just really digging Vinegar Syndrome right now, guys. I am digging the direction they're going in. And I'm excited to receive in my March titles. I'm excited to pre-order the Halfway to Black Friday sale stuff when it gets revealed tonight. And they're just firing on all cylinders. You know, they're still releasing some cult stuff here and there uh, for the people that like that kind of stuff. But I look, I like that stuff, but I also like movies, like real movies, like that's movies that are good for the soul, good for the movie love and heart. We all need those movies that have substance in them. Um, it's just good for the soul. So thank you all for watching my video and my ranking of my six Vinegar Syndrome titles that I have bought and uh, purchased in 2024. Leave me your thoughts down below, guys, on, on some of the titles that you've gotten in your collection this year from Vinegar Syndrome. Also, let me know your thoughts on Vinegar Syndrome as a whole. Um, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Turn on those bell notifications for all future videos, and follow me on all my social media accounts. I'm on Twitter and Instagram and Letterboxd and uh, all those places, guys, down below in the description, and we'll see you next time.